Okay, um, again, hello, welcome to my presentation about what I've been working on these last few weeks. Um, I did a carry research project trying to disentangle the nuclear risk field and create an overview of different approaches to reducing nuclear risks. My name is Sarah. I'm a recent graduate of a master's program in global politics with a focus on China. And I've been mentored by Christian Ruhl from Founders Plutch, um, who provided incredible support and help throughout the last few weeks and who I am extremely grateful towards. Okay, quick summary of this presentation. I will first talk about um, my background and what motivated me to do this project can be summarized very briefly by saying that um, I've been interested in nuclear weapons and the danger that they pose, but felt very confused about what someone like me or a group of people like the effective altruism community could possibly do to reduce risk from nuclear weapons. I will then talk about my broad approach and what I've, basically what I've been doing these last few weeks, and then give a high level overview of the output that I've used. Yeah, so on my background, I have been engaging with the topic of nuclear weapons for quite some years as part of, part of my studies on global politics. Um, from that prior engagement, I basically got the impression that there is a lot of literature and a wide debate on nuclear weapons and their dangers, um, but that there doesn't really seem to be anything like a scholarly consensus on how to address the problem that nuclear weapons or the risk that nuclear, nuclear weapons pose. Nor do I think that there exists something like an easy way for outsiders to look at this debate and get a quick overview or a good understanding of what the issues in question are and to form um, their own opinion on this topic or to figure out how to work on the topic. Um, yeah, from these impressions, um, I derived my goal for this research project, which is, as I said, to disentangle this problem area by asking myself, what do people even mean when they say um, nuclear risk? And then more importantly, what are ways to address or to reduce nuclear risks uh, in an, yeah, effectively, basically. So yeah, um, on my methods, the general approach for my project um, has been fairly clear to me from the very start. I think, or it, it seems very valuable to me um, to have a comprehensive overview of existing ideas for how, how to work on a complex problem um, like nuclear risk reduction. And then a secondary goal that I felt less sure about from the start um, would be to try and find a way to evaluate these different ideas to figure out, is there are there some ideas that seem more promising and more justified to pursue? Um, the devil, it turned out, was in the details. So I spent quite a bit of the fellowship trying to work out how exactly to pursue this, uh, to pursue this general approach. So I tried a couple of different things to create the overview and then also to evaluate different ideas. I don't really have the time to go into these different things that I tried to do, but I'm happy to elaborate on that if anybody's interested and has questions, either after this presentation or at any time really. So please feel free to reach out um, if you care to um, hear about this. What I, the method that I ended up um, going with to create the overview of existing ideas was um, a, a, an attempt to identify crucial questions in the nuclear risk field, which different people disagree about and which can account for different appro approaches towards reducing nuclear risks. That already brings me to my um, major outputs. Um, what you can see here on the, slides, uh, on the slide is the list of crucial questions that I think um, people need to grapple with in order to um, figure out how to work on nuclear risk reduction. As you can see, there's um, buckets of different questions in a sense. So on the very top, there are some meta questions of a methodological and epistemological nature that I think are important um, to reflect on if you want to work on nuclear risk reduction. And then in the middle, you see more substantive questions and answering those more substantive questions hopefully leads you to um, figuring out which kind of approach to nuclear risk re reduction um, makes sense. Yeah, so the first, this was the first output, identifying these questions to try and give structure to the debate on nuclear risk. The second thing that I did was to look at the literature and try to summarize and categorize what different people have said about these questions. And here on the slide, you can see um, the output of that for one of the questions. So I looked at what kind of goals um, might you be interested in if you care about reducing nuclear risks and then came up with those um, seven potential goals that I hope 
comprehensively um, describe what different people um, try to do. Um, I did the same thing for other questions, including this one, what are promising strategies for reducing the probability of nuclear war? Um, and then for this question, um, once I had identified these five possible strategies for reducing the probability of nuclear war, I then also took a step at trying to evaluate these different ideas. So this is the um, second goal that I outlined in the beginning. This basically <laughs> did not succeed. So um, I did not manage to come up with, like I did a couple of things to try and evaluate these ideas. None of them seemed satisfying or convincing to me. I don't feel like I now have sufficient understanding or that anybody that I have read has sufficient understanding to strongly recommend any of these um, strategies or to discourage people from pursuing any of these strategies. Yeah, and so I ended up spending quite a bit, quite a bit of time on this question of how to evaluate ideas and then also on the meta question that lies behind it, um, which asks about what kind of methods can we even um, apply to do an evaluation of that kind? And then also the question that is marked in the darker shade of blue in this slide. If, if it turns out that we can't really, like we don't have evidence or reasons to um, confidently assess different strategies, what should we do? If, if there is like large uncertainty about the consequences of our action, of our actions and of different interventions, is there, is there any other um, grounds for making decisions in this space. I'm still trying to, to figure out what I think about this, um, what seems like reasonable responses, what have other people said, so I can't really give you um, great insights on it yet. Um, I will commit to, to um, spending the next couple of days and probably weeks further working on this question, thinking about this question, and hopefully at some point or some point soon, uh, writing up my thoughts in something like an essay format um, to then put out there for um, other people to also discuss because I think it's very, very important to, to make some progress on this question if, if at all possible. Yeah, the last thing I want to mention is that aside from the research project itself, I think one of the major um, positive outcomes of this fellowship for me is that I just did a lot of learning throughout the last few weeks. I learned a lot methodologically from trying out these different approaches to creating the overview, to evaluating the ideas. Um, but I also just learned a lot about my own beliefs, how I think about different things, my models of the world. I did that through reading a lot of stuff, but also, and most importantly, through conversations with experts in the field, but also just with the other fellows. So um, yeah, I wanted to mention that because I think I took a great, um, yeah, I, I took, a lot out of this. I benefited a lot from it and seems important to, yeah, give it some credit. This brings me to the end of my presentation. I am looking forward to your questions and here is an overview of my project, which might help to yeah, come up with questions.